Okay, students, so uh, this is part two of our data development analysis uh, video series. And what I want to do here is there is an example in the Anderson text in chapter five on page 216, which uh, in this example, uh, Anderson looks at four hospitals, general hospital, university hospital, county, and state hospitals. And each of these hospitals utilizes three inputs, full-time equivalent non-physicians, uh, miscellaneous supplies, and bed days available in thousands uh, to produce four outputs. And the four outputs are patient days under Medicare, patient days not under Medicare, number of nurses trained, and number of interns trained. So now the objective of this example is to find out if there is a hospital that is operating inefficiently relative to the other hospitals. Uh, <clears throat> so in order to find this, we can use a linear programming model. And we'll use Excel here in a minute to find out the answer. In the linear programming model, the virtual pr producer is a weighted composite of all of the uh, inputs and outputs used the inputs used to produce outputs by the various hospitals and we're going to get an efficiency index E which is going to be the objective we want to minimize. Uh, WIs are the, weighted are the weights that we will use as decision variables and this is one of those strange cases where E is not only, a, uh, not only the objective but it's also a decision variable kind of like in a, a finance problem. And uh, so the linear programming model here then is we have our inputs, uh, we have uh, the inputs are the sums of the weights times the uh, actual quantity of that input used by the hospitals. So we sum all of those three inputs up, uh, I'm sorry, so we sum the inputs times the weights for the hospitals up and those have to be less than or equal to the hospital that we're looking at, in this case we're going to look at county hospital, that hospital we're looking at is this x naught term times our efficiency index E. Uh, the other constraints we're going to look at are the outputs, which are the sums of the weights uh, times the inputs for each individual hospital. Um, those have to be greater than or equal to the outputs for the hospital under study. So, in other words, what we're trying to look at here on the input side is can we produce at least the same amount of output with uh, the same or less input than county is using. And on the output side, we're looking to see if we can produce at least as much output as county is producing, if not more. Uh, the last constraints then are the weights. Of course, as weights and anything have to all sum up to 1, so they're going to be between 0 and 1, and sum to 1. And lastly, our decision variables have to be greater than or equal to zero, which is our non-negativity constraint. The inputs from the text are given as follows. We have our four hospitals here, General University, County, and State. Uh, the, the three inputs are the FTE non-physicians uh, supplies, which is a dollar figure and thousands of dollars. These are expenditures. And the number of bed days of, available. And I've highlighted county here as the hospital that we suspect of being inefficient. Uh, we also have the outputs here. We have the Medicare patient days, non-Medicare patient days, number of nurses trained, and number of interns trained. So those are all outputs from our production process. And again, we have county highlighted as the suspicious hospital. So uh, once we run the linear programming model, we're going to get some value for this objective uh, variable E. And of course, it's going to be between 0 and 1. If E is actually equal to 1, then the hospital that we're looking at uh, is actually efficient. And more specifically, the composite hospital that we're looking, uh, that we're creating, this virtual hospital requires as much input as our study hospital, or county in this case, requires as much input as county to produce at least the same amount of output. If E is less than 1, then the, the composite or virtual hospital can produce the same output as county with less inputs 
and we would deem County then to be an inefficient hospital. All right, so let's go ahead then and let's look at the Excel spreadsheet. Um, I've created these decision variables up here in yellow. Now it's important to note that um, I created a range name DECVAR for our decision variables, but DECVAR is only the range uh, of the weights. It does not include this E out here. So I'll show you how we're putting this together. We've put our inputs here as just uh, numbers input into these cells. We've put our outputs as numbers into these cells. And of course, these inputs and outputs are going to be coefficients of these weights that we're going to solve for here. So we can think of these as, as sort of a typical coefficient matrix. Uh, our last constraints here, we have the weights. Of course, uh, these coefficients are just going to be ones because the weights are going to be calculated up here. All right, so to get this uh, sum of the left-hand side, we're going to use a, a typical sum product uh, formula. We're going to sum up, so for instance, for FTE non-physicians, we're going to sum up uh, 285.2 times the weight that we give the general, WG is for general, plus 162.3 times the weight we give to university, plus 275.7 times the weight we give to county, plus 210.4 times the weight we give to state. Uh, that's going to be the sum that goes here. Now, because county is the hospital we're going to study, we're going to expect the weight given to county to end up being zero. So the, the county values aren't going to be a part of the composite hospital. All right, so let's look over here at what goes on in the right-hand side. Again, on the inputs, uh, we have this unique situation where um, it's going to be the value of uh, the study hospital input. So in this case, it's going to be the value here for county. So for FTE non-physicians, this is going to be 275.7, or D18. And we're going to multiply this times our E index, which I have up here in deck bar. Well, I have up here by deck bar as cell F13. And so likewise, on the next row, uh, the right-hand side is going to be this 348.5 from down here of cell B19 uh, multiplied by the sufficiency index. And same thing for the bed beds. Okay, so let's look at the outputs then. On the outputs, again, we're going to just do a standard sum product of these outputs multiplied by our four-weight decision variables, deck bar. And those have to be greater than or equal to the amount of output uh, that county is giving us. So county is giving us, so here is this is equal to cell D24, which is the value of output for Medicare patient days per count. So it's 36.72. So in other words, uh, to determine whether or not this composite, I'm sorry, to determine whether or not county is efficient, we're going to have to produce at least the same amount of output as county. So that's why we have this greater than or equal to so it's here. All right, and then lastly on the weights, this is going to be some product of these ones times the weights up here. And those have to sum to one, so we're going to force those to one to give us a true weighting measure. All right, so let's, uh, uh, oh, one more thing. So uh, I've got, E is going to be a change in cells. So this is going to be a decision variable, so I've got nothing here. I've got nothing in my decision variables, as usual. Uh, in order to get Excel solver to, to solve, uh, we have to have an objective function that's got some sort of formula or value. So what we've done here for the efficiency index, oops, what we put in this cell is we're just saying this is equal to whatever Excel is going to return for the efficiency index. So this is the thing that we're going to try to minimize. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, hit the solver. Oops, I've already got values in here, so I'm going to go through these uh, one by one. So uh, we're going to minimize our objective, and our objective is this cell where we have our efficiency index. We're going to change the cells uh, deck bar plus. So we're going to change our weights plus uh, this efficiency index decision variable here 
So I can't type deck bar in like I normally would. Subject to the constraints, so uh, I'm going to add in the constraints, uh, the input constraints, the output constraints, and the weight constraints. So here we have some of left hand side, uh, less than or equal to uh, right hand side. And then uh, I'm going to add in the output constraints. So these are all going to have to be greater than or equal to these. Lastly, I'm going to add in my weights. Some of the weights have to be equal to square right hand side of the Alright, so I've got objective. The thing to do with the objective is to minimize changing cells and constraints. I'm going to make sure I've got simplex LP. I've got my non negativity constraints set here with this little checkbox. So now I hit solve. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, my efficiency index is 0.905. So what that tells me is that the composite hospital is able to produce the same level of output as county is with only 90.5% of the inputs. So that does tell me that county is inefficient. And if I look at the weights here, I can see what percent of the composite hospital is made up of each uh, hospital. So, in other words, general hospital, so the composite hospital used 21% uh, of general hospital, 26% of university, and uh, roughly 53% of state. And of course, it didn't use any of county because that's what we're studying. Um, so, let's go ahead and look at the answer report and see if there's any information we can bring from some of the things given here. Um, So let's go down here to the constraints. And a couple of interesting things we can note with respect to slack values. So I'm going to go down here first uh, on the outputs. And you'll notice that here for nurses trained, it's non-binding, a slack value of 1.615. What that tells me is, remember the output you're going to produce at least as much as county, if not more. So this is greater than or equal to constraint. So what this tells me is I produced 1.615 more nurses uh, than county produced, or 176.15. County had 175. Uh, for interns trained, I produced uh, 37, or I trained 37 more interns. Now, if you look at the slack on the input side, uh, what this is telling us is the leftover input that we didn't use that county would have used. So, for FTE non-physicians, our composite hospital only used 213.75, which we know is 90.5% of what county used, giving us a slack or a leftover of 35.82. FTE non-physicians not used by the Open Public Hospital. Uh, the supplies, uh, we used 174.42. Um, so this would be thousands of dollars. This is an expenditure. So we spent 174,000 less dollars than that. Okay, so let's go back again then and look at the answers and see if there's anything interesting here. Uh, we can see the on the inputs, here we clearly use fewer inputs um, for FTE non-physicians and supplies. Uh, bed days was the actual binding input here, so we used just the same amount as county did. On the outputs, um, the binding constraint here, or actually constraints, we produce the exact same amount of output in Medicare and non-Medicare patient days. But we also trained more nurses and we trained more interns. And lastly, our weight constraint does indeed equal one. Uh, so what we can surmise from looking at this analysis is that county is inefficient. Um, and county, if we were evaluating these hospitals, county would be the hospital that we would want.